The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink TV, its sponsors, or partners. Now in Sudbury, iTech is officially in the north offering spill response, remediation, and vacuum truck services. iTech provides 24-hour support to insurance, transportation, industrial, and municipal sectors. Visit iTechEnvironmental.ca or follow iTechHQ on Twitter. garden can turn an empty plate into a full belly. This year, plant and grow an extra row and donate the harvest to your local food bank. Plant a row, grow a row for the hungry. Help us help those in need. Now in Sudbury, iTech is officially in the north offering spill response, remediation and vacuum truck services. iTech provides 24-hour support to insurance, transportation, industrial and municipal sectors. Visit iTechEnvironmental.ca or follow iTechHQ on Twitter. My name is Sean McLaren, and I am your host and of course we are shooting in lovely downtown Sudbury at the beautiful SRO nightclub and bar. Ladies and gentlemen, give yourselves a round of applause for being here tonight. Now, I want to start off because it's at the end of the year. We want to talk a little bit about 2011. 2011 was a bit of a weird year. We saw the Occupy movement spread around the world. We saw Time Magazine named the protester person of the year. We also saw the end of the space program as we know it. Now, there were also some really great things about 2011. Like the royal wedding. <laughs> and we caught Osama bin Laden. Okay, let's face it, 2011 sucked. There was really nothing cool going on in 2011. So in honor of that, let's start off in no particular order, my list of who sucked in 2011. Starting with Canadians. That's right, I'm talking to you, Canada. Shut up, relax, hold on, what I'm saying here is that Canada, the issue I have right now is a recent study just revealed that Canada is having the least sex out of all countries in the world. Yeah, the study, yeah, well, maybe for you, sir, but you're not the average. Lithuania is kicking our butts. In a sexy, naked landslide, Lithuania is beating us. And also, on top of which, the study has also revealed that Can Canadians are not having spontaneous sex. On average, Canada, seriously, I, you guys think this, but masturbation doesn't count, okay? I'm just... <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Canadians are not having spontaneous sex. On average, we are planning three days in advance to do it. I schedule root canals three days in advance. Here's your resolution, Canada. In 2012, I want you to have more spontaneous sex. If you think... If you think that no one is looking at you in the produce aisle, I say go for it. Just don't do it in Smith's, because that's a classy grocery store, okay? <laughs> Number two on my list of people who sucked in 2011, Sudbury drivers. Now, we are not nearly as bad as our friends down to the south. I'm talking to you, Barry. But seriously, we were so bad in 2011 that the city is now implementing new rules for the road. Just to give you an example of what's coming ahead in 2012, number one, if you're driving on Radar Road, you are expected to drive just as fast as the airplanes that are landing at the airport. <laughs> if you don't drive as fast as the airplanes, you are considered a wussy and you have your license revoked. <laughs> number two, if you are driving in a zone license 80 to 90 kilometers and you are not going at least 120, you are considered a road hazard. Get off the road. If someone flips you the bird, just take it. If you flip them the bird, well then you're gonna get shot. <laughs> and finally on my list of who sucked the most in 2011, Adam Sandler. That's right, Adam Sandler. I'm talking to you. I got three words for you, Jack and Jill. Do you remember the last time you were funny? Neither do I. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we got a great show for you tonight. It is the episode and we have some awesome stuff. I'm very, very excited because tonight we have a featured chat with the Sheepdogs, Canada's premier southern rock band. They made it to the cover of the Rolling Stone. We also have in the five-minute major with Alex Francis, Ali Loney of Dance Evolution, as well as Mitch Gagno, ringside MMA champ. And also, and this is awesome tonight, we have a Subway music legend, Don Kunto, playing a tune for all of you fine folks. But first, we have been doing a little contest on our Facebook page. It's called the Top 10 Comments. We posted a photo earlier this week of a pug in a compromising position. And we asked you to come up with the best Top 10 Comments. Here they are in order. I'm going to start off with a gentleman at number 10. David Stam Carter says, honest. I was just searching and it popped up on the screen. <laughs> Stacy Newell says, damn it, he found my pug shot. <laughs> Lisa Chenard says, this is totally what it looks like. <laughs> Alvis Plain says, traditional doggy style has less strain on the neck than this position <laughs> while watching TV. <laughs> Rob Gregorini says, ahem, mom. Jamie Rowland says, it's a good thing he doesn't have his toys out. <laughs> Eugene Solomon says, I knew my sister wasn't going to dance class every night. <laughs> Carson Kerr says, babe, I swear I was thinking of you. <laughs> Al Callow says, you Google Justin Bieber like 80 times a day, so don't judge me. And our number one winner who walks away with a prize is John Millenin, who says, okay, okay, you can have your pug tube, just please don't get the keys sticky this time. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you a little interview that we just recently did with the Sheepdogs. These guys are doing... Oh, sorry. Hey, thank God that wasn't recording. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to show you guys a, uh, a streeter that we just recently did. Hi, I'm Richard Johnson and welcome to my first video blog. Today we're going to talk about my resolutions for this, this year. I'd like to hit the gym, probably get a little stronger, maybe get better with my money. Maybe bulk up a little, get a little stronger. I hate being broke. More big because I don't want to get ripped. Being on TV has really made me cocky. I would like to maybe learn how to stretch a little bit better before I work out. The reason I'm doing this video blog is to share some tips. Winter, it's wet, you come in, it's warm, it's cozy. I hate when people rub me the wrong way. A lot of people think I'm a prick. Let me in, let me inside. I'm Richard Johnson. And this is my video blog. Hey guys, welcome to the episode. My name is Sean and I'm standing here next to Ewan and Ryan from the Sheepdogs. Uh, they're playing here, uh, sitting in the townhouse where they're going to be playing tonight. Very, very cool to have you guys on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Alright, first question. We're talking about uh, the fact that you guys have been on kind of a whirlwind of uh, notoriety and success. Uh, all started off with the Rolling Stone cover. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that, what went on? You guys made it to the cover of the Rolling Stone, the Dr. Hook song. You pulled it off. What's What's it like to be on the cover and have that success as a result? Uh, it's pretty crazy, man. I mean, obviously, we were the first unsigned band. We went about it in kind of a weird way. We were in a competition that Rolling Stone put on and uh, beat out a bunch of American bands. And 
ended up on the cover. It's pretty weird. It was a strange thing to be. Who uh, who told you to do it? Did one of your buddies come up and be like, "Yo, you gotta check out this contest," or was it something you? It guys was. It was actually submitted by industry people. Some industry people from around North America submitted bands, unsigned bands they thought were the best. Mm -hmm. There was like twelve hundred submitted. It whittled down to sixteen, and then from sixteen, it went all the way down to us. So, what do you think? Why why did you have the edge? Just sheer unadulterated good looks, or? I'd like to think that. Uh, I think a big part of it had to do with we were the only Canadian band. We got a lot of support from Canada. And also, I mean, our music is kind of very much like the kind of music that Rolling Stone, you know, stoked about when they yeah. started out. And I think a lot of people uh, took kindly to that as well. Awesome. So you guys have been touring a lot, running around all over Canada, all over the world. Uh, you got did tour with Kings of Leon. Mm -hmm. What are some of the bands and reactions that you've had from guys who've been in the industry for a long time to you guys coming up as the unsigned band who made it to the Rolling Stone? and now you guys are doing your own thing, kind of hitting those big t concerts and tours. Has it, uh, has it been a hard road is basically what I'm trying to ask? Uh, no, it's been good. I mean, it's been a hard road prior to the competition, but this last year's been pretty good. Things have been rolling out very well for us and getting a lot of exposure from the competition and things like radio play and lots more people coming to our shows. So you think it, like, before when you guys were the unsigned band, before Rolling Stone, before hitting on, on tour with all these big names, do you think it's uh, easier now to be more creative and kind of push your sound, or is it a little bit harder? Do you find a hard time going back to your roots? Um, no, we've pretty much done the same thing as we always Just keep doing it. Uh, we haven't had a change, and that's one of the good things about getting notoriety from this competition is that we sort of went about doing everything the way we always had. And so, you know, people expect us to to be the sheep dogs and so we, there's not any kind of expectation for us to change or, or fit into some kind of format like on the radio or you're just going to do what you do you bet. I think the nice thing about this is it's afforded us more time to do this full time which means only we can focus more on it versus yeah. you know working jobs or whatever. yeah there's no part time jobs this is your gig yeah no respect. it's great and so now we can do that it just means that we can focus more on it so hopefully logic would think that, that would mean that we could do a better job <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if that works yeah. right yeah well no and i've heard the album i've heard the songs you guys are killer awesome sound that i think is coming back in a big way with bands like kings leon and mumford and sons those kind of that southern rock vibe uh i think it's cool that you guys are doing it and doing it to a new generation who may not really have you know they're listening to the top 40 hits all the time but you guys are pushing this old kind of southern rock style is that always been your genre has it always been what you guys do um it's no, it's part of it. I mean, it's just, you know, we just try to make the music that we enjoy. Yeah. So we have all those influences that, uh, you know, that come from the music that we listen to. So there's some of that Southern Rock stuff, but there's, you know, melody and harmony and just all those kind of things too. Cool. Uh, you guys have not, this is not your first time to Sudbury. You guys have played a few shows in the townhouse before. Tell me about no, how no. those went. It's kind of some of our most infamous, like, I mean, we always talk about being on the road in Canada and having like a rough go at things. It's some of our most infamous show. That's pretty funny. I was saying before, it's pretty funny playing a sold out show here tonight because <laughs> You know, there's lots of shows where there's nobody here. There's one show where we were about to go on and a pub crawl came in. We're like, oh, this is going to be great. And as soon as we started playing, the pub crawl all got in the bus and left and the whole bar cleared out. So. Just basically said hello and then see you guys later. Yeah, I think we've done more drinking in the basement here than we have actually playing to people. That's so. awesome, man. So tonight, big show, awesome. Very stoked that you guys are continuing with all your success. Good luck on the rest of the tour. Right on. Thank Thanks you very a lot, much, Ewan. Thanks, Thanks for a lot, Ryan. Appreciate it. Man. And uh, just uh, shameless self-promotion. Where's the website where they can check out all your stuff? TheSheepDogs.com. TheSheepDogs.com. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Curious Times Bistro offers carefully selected items that appeal to all taste buds. From Caesar salads and chicken marsala to wild kangaroo and sea urchin. Curious Times, 1200 Paris Street, 705-522-3500. We know where they've taken her. Imagine what a little time can do for your family. Hi, I'm Lana Taylor, and you're watching the episode. Welcome back to the Five Minute Major. I'm your host, Alex Francis. Folks, today, our guests are Mitch Gagno, the featherweight champion of ringside promotions, and we also have the owner-operator of Dance Evolution, Ali Loney. We're going to be talking today about sports injuries. So, Mitch, you first. You ever suffered any sport injury that puts you out for any extended period of time? Yeah, I actually did. Uh, about a, a year and a half ago, I uh, tore my MCL. Yeah. Um, I was uh, preparing to defend my uh, title uh, back in April, 
and uh, about two weeks out, um, I was doing my wrestling and I uh, just went for a bad shot and uh, tore my MCL and uh, I was forced to, to pull out my, uh, my upcoming bout. Uh, how long did that take you to recover from? Um, it took about a, well I was, I was out of competition from the day that I, my last, from the injury, it took a year, a year to the day. A year to recover? Yeah. Did the year that it took to recover from that injury, was that, I mean, for lack of a better term, was that the right amount of time for you to, to take off, or was there any I did the proper push? treatments. I, I did the proper, uh, no, I, I, I did it properly. Like, I could have uh, easily taken a fight six months out when, you know, I was still, I, you know, I, after six months, I had started slowly getting back in training, and I could have easily pushed it and, and hurt myself again, but I, I you know, I, I didn't want to... It was a pretty severe tear, yeah. and uh, I didn't want to push it and then, you know, potentially go for surgery. I came out of that uh, surgery, uh, I mean, that uh, injury without any surgery on my knee. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I, you know, the way I did it, uh, I think it was pretty sufficient to... Uh, Perfect. What about you, Ali? In you know, your respective discipline, have you ever received, like, have you ever sustained an injury that's put you out for any length of time? Or? Well, anytime you're doing a physical activity, there's going to be injuries, right? Yeah. I'm lucky enough that I never had anything serious that would have to stop me, but I've had had dancers that have injuries that have put them out one, two years um, because of their injuries. Wow. Yeah, mostly sprained ankles. Yeah. Any but anytime need? you're doing a physical activity, like, the most that I had to suffer was like sore muscles. Yeah. I broke my toe before, tried putting those in point shoes <laughs> right before recital, that's not fun. <laughs> but nothing that had to stop me, but I definitely had some dancers that uh, suffered some injuries. Well, I guess I asked that question as a segue because recently in the media, there's been I mean, what seems like serious, serious injury. Uh, of epidemic proportions. If you watch hockey, I mean, there must be two dozen players out right now yeah. with concussions. Uh, if you look at the UFC, most notably recently, <laughs> George St. Pierre, uh, who had sustained a knee injury, you know, came back a little bit too soon and now he's out for 10 months. Um, in your experiences, do you guys ever, have you ever, I guess, received any push to come back too soon from an injury or sooner than you were ready? On dancing? A lot of times you're working with a team, right? Yeah. So sometimes I have to look at my students and say, you know, you have to sit down. Whereas they want to go back and they want to dance because they're scared to let down a teammate. Or they're scared to, you know, miss a competition. They work all year from September all the way until April yeah. just for maybe three competitions. So when they injure themselves right before a competition, pretty you know they really, really, <laughs> they, they want to be there. Yeah. Um, so that's the biggest thing is watching those dancers that really, really want to push get in there when they shouldn't be dancing shouldn't at be all. There. What about you, Mitch? Do you, uh, have you ever felt, have you ever felt pushed or any, uh, you know, undue pressure to come back sooner than you should have? Well, I, n I never had uh, any pressure really. Nobody ever pressured me to, to do something, but I think in the, the sport I'm in, um, you know, I don't, I don't think I ever went into a fight not injured. Um, so fair you know, enough. It, it, you, you're, you're injured, you know. Like you're, you're pushing your body, <laughs> you're pushing your body through, you know, uh, you know, four or five hours of training a day. You, you know, you're, you will get some kind of injury, you know. Yeah, I mean, you're always fighting hurt to some extent or another. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, guys, that's the five minutes. That's all wow. the time we have. Thank you very much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. That's it, guys. Back to you, Sean. Thank you very much, Alex Francis over the five minute major. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sean McLaren and you're watching the episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now guys, I had to talk a little bit about, you know, we gotta pay the bills. It's called social media. You may have heard of it before. Actually, Facebook, for instance. Have you guys seen today that they added this whole new timeline thing on Facebook? I have no idea what it is. It looks cool, but I'm confused. I'm afraid of new things. And Facebook, you keep screwing with my life, man. But we use Facebook. Check us out at the episode on Facebook. Check us out at www.theepisode.ca as well. You can check us out on Twitter. Now, there are so many different ways to get in touch with us via our online presence. And you can also check out a very exciting website called roosterblock.com. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> When we first started this show, I'll admit it, we weren't very funny. But now, we're, and, and some in the crowd like that douchebag over there, 
says we're not still funny. That didn't make sense. My, my grammar and syntax was off. Regardless, now we have a group called roosterblock.com involved in making our show as funny as possible. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my esteemed pleasure to give you the world television premiere of roosterblock.com. <laughs> with your talent and your good looks and your yeah. Fine, have your stupid dance. All right, from the top. Do the topless dance, do the topless dance. Everybody's doing the topless dance. Sean, and thank you to Rooster Block for showing that funny skit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I am uh, standing next to uh, the very lovely and much taller than me, Jenny Jellin. <laughs> we need a milk crate for the next shoot, guys. Uh, Jenny Jellin, you are the brand new host of the episode, and I'm really glad to have you on board. And uh, you went out on the street. What did you do? Well, we went out and we talked to some people on the streets of downtown Sudbury. We wanted to hear about the most embarrassing thing they've ever seen on Facebook. Now, a few people told me they didn't have Facebook. I didn't really believe them, but I let it go anyway, and we asked about the most embarrassing thing they've seen in real life. And we heard some amazing stories. Right now, well, let's see it. We want to know what the most embarrassing thing you've ever seen on Facebook is. Or in real life. <laughs> that sounds like a great story. Yeah, somebody uh, crapped themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more. Well, it's there. You couldn't get into the washroom in time, and uh, I guess they uh, t ended up relieving themselves in their pants. <laughs> it was pretty embarrassing. He left pretty quick. Well, should I tell them about Chad last week? <laughs> Chad. Oh, yeah. Well, everyone's calling Chad Salty Chin now because somebody hacked his Facebook and wrote, "I missed your balls on my chin." Well, maybe. Uh falling down in public that's, you know that's the worst you know you trip and you fall because of ice or snow or whatnot especially this, this time of year but has now it ever it, happened to you as it yes it has yes i think you know, we've all tripped i've fall. broken bones but you're a bit of a dance machine too i know so you got some yeah dance i try <laughs> Got a good one. Um, this was uh, at a bar, uh, and they had a uh, girl had candles on. You know, you can watch it change in an ashtray. And she bent over to ask me what I wanted to drink, and all of her hair caught on fire. Oh shit! And at the end of it all, she had to pay for all the shots that she spilt. Um, my brother and a friend were actually drywalling, and I have pictures of them. Maybe I should put a post it on my Facebook. <laughs> you absolutely <laughs> should. Now you're thinking. Because they had um, drywall all over their face. They were wrestling with it. <laughs> so it's be I guess that's better than women in mud, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story. Yeah, it was. That's a great story there. Okay, um, this one time on Facebook, I put, um, I was going to drop a deuce and then how fast it was going to come out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's and, what I did. And how come you thought that was a good idea? Because I'm open with everything, <laughs> so it didn't bother me. But everybody else thought it was pretty embarrassing. I was embarrassed. <laughs> um, probably that someone had um, a viral infection and just spread it all across Facebook. Mm, genital warts. Um, yeah, it was kind of gross, but it's, it's Facebook for you. There's lots of stuff on there that's pretty... Uh, Embarrassing at times, right? Ladies and gentlemen, Don Cuso! 
My card says I'm a professional. <laughs> if you remember her, well, you'd remember her this way. Downtown girl just from the Sally Ann Thought she talked with Jesus H But he'd always meant to tell us Yes, we don't make time to play Then it sounded crazy But now I'm working every day And she ain't wrong, 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 wrong No, she ain't wrong Remember him, and you remember him this way. Stop up man who whistled through his hands, his beard all worn and gray. He said the devil's come back for us, he fears he's here to stay. And I'm a fool for singing if this pop will not be paid with no song, song, song. Song, song, yeah, with no song, 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 song. Well, just remember me this way Man who tried to walk straight and narrow Down the crooked path like they Yeah, I walked out times the sunshine Like I crawl on darker days I tried to do the best to see The good part of me stay When I'm gone, gone, gone Song, 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 song. Ladies and gentlemen, John Cuso. Well played, my friend. Thank you very well done. Now, okay, guys, John Cuso, uh, very cool cat, very good looking guy. Uh, now, the thing is, we heard, a, we heard a weird story once upon a time, and I noticed you had a couple of grays in your beard right here. And, uh, I just want to make sure those are colored in for the camera. I know exactly where you're going with this. Okay, you got to tell this story, please, really quickly. Apparently, a famous celebrity uh, decided that she was going to fill in your grays one night, like I'm doing right now. It's, it, that, that was exactly it. Yeah. Felt uh, just as uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but, but she was much better looking than I was. Yes. Yes. And you know what? We're not going to tell you. Check it out on our Facebook page. Now, guys, we're going to be right back after this commercial break. Film our sponsors. We love you all. Stay tuned to the episode. Thank you very much, Don Kunto. Thank you. Thank you. Now in Sudbury, iTech is officially in the north offering spill response, remediation, and vacuum truck services. iTech provides 24-hour support to insurance, transportation, industrial, and municipal sectors. Visit iTechEnvironmental.ca or follow iTechHQ on Twitter. Huge round of applause, of course, to the people in the audience. Thank you for being here tonight. And, of course, I want to say thank you to the new guy in the background, DJ Troutman, for being a hype man and, of course, playing some tunes. Thank you to the Sheepdogs. Thank you to Ali Loney. Thank you to Mitch Gagnon and, of course, to Don Kunto and everybody watching at home. Good night and enjoy yourselves, kids. Thank you. Yeah.